Hello, welcome back to the National Motor Museum at Beulieu, and here we are in the midst of another lockdown. You'll probably see in the background most of the exhibits are covered, uh, but we thought again we'd try and bring the museum to you. And it's uh, now the middle of autumn, and where we were outside filming the cars, we're trying to do it inside. So please forgive the lighting and maybe a little bit of flare, but we're doing the best we can. I'm stood today in front of the 1903 De Dietrich. Uh, it could be 1904, it's a matter of conjecture. Um, the uh, Veteran Car Club say the car's 1904. That's absolutely fine, they've researched it, and I'm sure it most probably is. I've got to say that out of all of the cars within the Motor Museum, apart from one other little car, this is my favorite car in the entire collection. 1903, built by De Dietrich. Now, De Dietrich were a manufacturer. They were in France, uh, in the Alsace, and they were in the production of steel and iron works from the 17th century. Now, this particular car is a 24 horsepower car, and these cars were really, really quick road cars. In fact, in the 1903 Paris Madrid race, one of these cars crashed sadly after striking a dog and hitting a tree and killing both the driver and the uh, mechanic, the driver, Mr. Barrow. Um, and sadly, they believe that when the car crashed, it was doing in excess of 80 miles an hour. I, I mean, absolutely no doubt that this car will do 60 miles an hour with the hood down. And indeed, the next chassis number on from this car is a De Dietrich, which is at the uh, Shuttleworth collection. Uh, and that is in racing uh, frame, but trimmed with a fuel tank behind the seats here and um, a much lighter, sportier body. Great cars, really, really quite powerful for the day. Now this, as I said, was rated at 24 horsepower. If you'd looked at one of the previous uh, videos we did, it was of the 22 horsepower Daimler, which is sat next to this car on display when we were outside with the car. This car has probably got 30 to 50% more power than the 22 horsepower Daimler, because the horsepower rating was a calculation of bore size and stroke a number of cylinders. But this car that has mechanical inlet valve whereas the 03 Daimler has atmospheric inlet valves, so this engine is far more efficient. And a great car it is too. Um, Edward Lord Montague and I took this on the uh, Bordeaux to Paris event, uh, which actually was 780 miles in total, and nothing went wrong with the car. The only problem we, we had was a spring drive for the oil pump coming off and it wouldn't fit into a lot of the car parks because of the height. Now I've explained that uh, this is quite a rapid car and this car only has rear wheel brakes which is really common on cars of this time, time and year because front wheel brakes didn't really show itself until just before the first world war. The idea of getting the braking force to work through steering wheels was the geometry was quite complicated. So, 80 mile an hour car in racing form, weighing nearly one and three quarter tons on rear wheel brakes only and skinny tyres. Quite a lethal combination. No shock absorbers either, which is uh, quite a problem on a car, particularly at this length, if it starts to bounce, the steering will go almost from lock to lock, so you've got to be very, very careful um, judging the road, and if you notice a bounce, you've really got to start braking quite hard. So if you want to come closer to the car now, I will show you some more detail. I will be taking the bonnet off and we'll look at the engine more closely, but if we come along, you will see across the uh, dashboard as it were. I'll go the other side of the car and just show you the bits and pieces.
So we have a copper tank here, and that's a header tank for the fuel. The fuel is actually filled into a tank which is under the rear floor through this pipe here. And you actually pump the fuel pressure up with this bicycle pump almost until you register one pound on this gauge. And the fuel is forced up into this top tank and then it goes down to the engine. This is a greaser for the trunnions where the uh, chain drive comes out through the transaxle and I'll show you that in a moment. As I've just explained, this is the pump for pumping the uh, fuel pressure up. And we have the lubricator here. This pump is for giving an extra shot of oil directly into the bores. And then you have both uh, ends of the crankshaft drip feed down into the sump and it's called a total loss oil system and this is the ignition timing advance and retard the ignition switch and the audible warning of approach so we have the clutch foot brake and throttle in the standard format that we are very used to seeing these days and up on the steering wheel there is a hand throttle which sets the tick over speed. It's got a thing called a quadrant gear change where you bring it one notch back in this reverse and then three notches forward for first, second and third gears and a handbrake. The handbrake is you use the most, you've got the best leverage and also this works directly on the back wheels whereas the foot brake works on the output side of the gearbox and can cause some damage to the um, pinion gears. So I'll come back round and I'd like you to look at the chain drive which is just under the, the car just behind where the driver sits and the passenger and you can clearly see the chain and sprocket there that's the drive the trunnion of those greasers went down into just here on the output side and the, the axle is called a transaxle because you've got the gearbox and the rear axle the differential unit all in the same unit and then if you come round you'll clearly see down the spring and the sprocket onto the rear drum and the brake the rear brake is actually within that mechanism so you can uh, see that it is prone to getting water in it and actually grease from the chain so you have to be very careful. Now you probably saw how wonderful the front seats were and they, they are almost like armchairs and I'll just show you inside the back of the car as well under this top catch we open it up there is an extra seat that comes down um, within the door but if you look inside you'll see the buttoned upholstery inside very opulent motor car now we'll go around back around to the front because what I want to do now is take the bonnet off and show you the mechanics of the thing so here we have the powerhouse of this magnificent motor car, the four cylinder inline five and a half litre to Dietrich engine. Now this is such a wonderful long stroke engine. It just has a lot of torque and is lovely and low revving, large cylinder capacity, just a wonderful thing. Now the carburetor is not the original, the, had a carburetor and governor mechanism which worked off of the timing gear um, and that wasn't present with the motor car when we first got it into the collection. Now this car was stored from 1910 up until 1958 in London. When the car was found the people who got the car out thought it'd be great fun to try and just start it up see if it would go. So they put some petrol in it um, and towed it down the road. Sadly, the piston rings were stuck. The petrol got into the sump and um, virtually blew the engine in half. So um, when you actually look 
at the line of the bearings through the centre of the crankcase, the bearings actually, to be line bored, are not actually concentric in the crankcase, which makes it quite interesting when you're machining it. So I was saying about the 1903 Daimler being less powerful, this is the pushrod assembly working the mechanical inlet valves. The exhaust valves are side valves under here and then the push rods come up here and you've got inlet over exhaust. You have a um, modern HT ignition system that's fitted because this car originally ran with a low tension ignition which is a, a low voltage magneto running through contacts which pull apart and is a low voltage spark. It did work pretty well and with the uh, Shuttleworth car the low tension system is there on the car. We'd love to recreate it for this motor car. I mentioned the, the drive for the, um, the governor assembly etc being missing and if you come round this side of the engine you will see that there's a secondary shaft running out here with blanking plates and that was the, the operating mechanism for the strikers which worked the low tension ignition. Here we have a more modern four cylinder high tension 12 volt system grafted in. And actually you when you look at the crankcase, you can see the gap at the front and the back of the water pump down there is slightly different because the water pump is sat in the engine at an angle because of the explosion that occurred back in 1958. Now I mentioned that the only thing that happened on the Bordeaux to Paris event was the oil pump drive coming off and that was it. And that's all that happened in 780 miles of use on the road that that had come off and that only happened because we hit a series of large bumps. And that's a common spring drive of the period and this actually operates the fuel pump, the, the oil pump which is on the dashboard. The car has a lovely battery and toolbox on the side which goes to the overall effect and you can quite clearly see the quadrant gear change here and the opulence of the seating. Just really a magnificent motor car. So there we have it. And anybody asks me what's your favourite car within the Motor Museum, here it is, it's the Dedetri. Of course, I am slightly biased. Um, my real favourite, of course, is my family Morgan. However, this car, as far as the collection is concerned, is my favourite. It is privately owned and on loan to us, and it has been on loan to us from the same family since the early 60s, and part of the permanent collection here at the National Motor Museum. I hope you've uh, enjoyed having a look at uh, another car within the museum. Sorry I can't start it up because we are within the, the museum itself, um, and we will bring you some motor cars and motorcycles a bit later on. Thank you.